good afternoon from Matt Leg TV. <laughs> Hi everyone, so I'm down at 10 Downing Street for the free Jason Moore campaign. We've got Yami B, Kev Lane and Terry Ellis. How you doing lads? Oh, I wake right. up a stiffy every morning, so I've got to be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was. I got COVID. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Um, so I think this went really well today. Um, it's going to be BBC London, or BBC News, BBC London tonight. Lovely. Um, what do you think, how do you think it went, Jamie? I can't get Terry space, where is it? No, you will see it. Oh, you will, you will see it. it works. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just pleased. It's quite overwhelming, really, especially the scene with the pole as well. Yeah, it's emotional. They get that that video there. Ke Kevin's experience with the CCRC and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, Terry Ellis um, done his stuff. Um, yeah, no, it's a great turnout here. The BBC, um, the Bishops, one of the great. We had the Bishop, Joanna. yeah. Um, we had uh, Lord. Um, Lord Lou, was it worth it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lord Luke, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lord Luke, Kev's, uh, Kev's here as well. Um, yeah, I went bleeding. I'm just on the great which goes justice, though. Um, yes. My case is quite well known. But I feel that what will happen today is the public recognition that will be generated from the news. And that brings overwhelming support once they see that you're outside town. Down the street, and people are making the effort. They say, well, it must be a justified cause. People are upset about this. What, Joanna, the bishop, and such. So, if yeah, you've got great footage now for Jason, he will be over the moon. Yeah. You served 22 years. I did 24 in total. I did 20 in one go. I got out and released. So, got recalled. <coughs> I think for me, the, you know, the good thing has happened over the last year since we've been campaigning for Jason is the fact that we now have one of the best uh, barristers in England uh, that does a uh, pro bono and will be taken on his case. So that's, that's, that's come to the forefront. We always said, look, as much as we can, we can campaign outside 10 Downing Street, hold banners and shout, shout until, until uh, the cows come home, you know, I wasn't really going to get us anywhere. But what will get us anywhere? The fact that we've now got national television, yep. in fact we've got Kevin and all the guys that have come down here today. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, the barrister, we've got the bishop, we've got local MPs, we've got Ian Botham, uh, we've got so many celebrities coming on board now. There this, is, yeah. this is what's going to push forget. Jason's case. I think he will. I think it's Tim's the, here. Never forget the, the, Tim's the pivotal here. point. Yeah. I know, and we, we've also got a record out. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Terry. That's yeah, Tim. Tim. That's the big Tim. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Tim, you Tim, want to Tim, Tim, would you mind coming and say a quick word? So, this is one of the most unusual things. So, hey, dude. Hey, dude. Nice man. Tim, you're. So, we have Tim Darby who. Very unusual. Tim, how you doing? Thanks oh, for, right, thanks for coming good, 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 on. Good, good, and this is unusual because you're obviously related to the, the, the victim. He was your brother, yeah. yeah. And you're supporting the release of Jason. Which so I think is unheard of. It's, it's all about prison. You know, you don't bat a geezer up for a life. We didn't know that you never committed it. You know, there's so much evidence there showing that they have never done it. Right? Even from the off, they had nothing. You know what I mean? They, they got a witness. We know we weren't even fucking here, really, because he was, you know, he was there, he was there, he was there. Now he's turned up and said, "Oh, I was pissed at the time. I only see it with people mine, and you know, the police don't want to try." Well, the other one never turned around and said that. Cool. No. Let him try. Who knows what well result? Really, that, that, if, if you I don't question it straight away, they're paying you up for it. So you save it up? Of course they do. But they wanted him on there, so they've done all that. He was asking in the interview, in the depositions, uh, was it the left or the right? He didn't know what side the driver was. He was a Somalian fella, nothing wrong with him, but the guy didn't know English properly, he didn't know what was going on. I don't even think he was ever there. Because when, <laughs> when they'd done the, when they'd done the uh, reconstruction, you know, they didn't know, they had to abandon it, they had to abandon it because they didn't know where he was. They used that every And they used the clan as a as, you know, as And knocked on the door the day before the trial. And he changed his mind. And then you got and then you got Paul One, yeah. so called brother, uh, brother's mate, right? Yeah. You know, he made out he was asleep in a car. But he was seen on CCTV as the third man in the in the parcel there. Why do you, you know think they, why do you think they try to cover up so much now? Listen, they, he was seen hiding the knife behind the hall, right? I don't know if you're on the audit. He had, he had like pills on him. They didn't, they didn't nick him for that. They decided, oh, we're going to use him as a, as a witness. 
whipped the fucking body turned around and said it was, it was asleep. You know, absolute crap. Why do you, why do you think at the end of the day they, 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 they convicted uh, Jason and not him? Why? Yeah. Listen, it's questions about Randy Abergeza. Yeah, it's definitely a question mark when the other guys are. Yeah, whoever he was working with them. Yeah, yeah, look, the other, look, he goes up and gets a pound for one and a, a bend on the other one. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't stand by the yeah. no. Well, thank you very much, mate. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, 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 appreciate that. that. I served 24 years in prison for a crime I didn't commit, so I understand the gravity of a miscarriage of justice. And until we have transparency with disclosure, and another one of the factors that the criminal justice system like to control, you're going to see miscarriages of justice for many more years to come. The way they control the evidence, the disclosure, the grades they put you at, how they control the jury, they pick the jury members. I mean, on my, on my jury, the foreman was a policeman, and my jury was picked, so they were selected, and then I was allowed to select from the selected jury. And we found out that their foreman was a police officer. So, in relation to miscarriages of justice, until the criminal justice is reviewed and revamped, you're going to see many more of these. So Jason Moore, he needs support. If you don't get behind him, which you lot do, but other people who don't, just sign the petition or leave a message or spread the word about him because that's how you bring uh, weight to bear on this case. Thank you for your support and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. There's only one thing certain in this case. Robert Darby was murdered on the 24th of August 2005 in Ilford. A man, Jason Moore, was sent to prison for that murder. But in an extraordinary act of solidarity, both his family and the family of Robert Darby have come together to fight against that conviction. <laughs> These two families, united despite their very different perspectives, believe that conviction is unsafe. We're here today to protest about Jason's imprisonment without parole because he's adamant in declaring his innocence. We're here today to protest about the way that the Criminal Cases Review Commission has so far refused to listen to the evidence that shows that this is an unsafe conviction. Evidence that's so overwhelming that anyone who reads it can hardly believe that it's been allowed to stand and to keep an innocent man in prison these last years. We're here today to say, let the evidence speak. What is that evidence? Well, in short, Jason Moore is six foot five, broad shouldered, with a big head of dark hair. CCTV from the day shows that he was wearing a black hoodie with grey stripes on the sleeves. In comparison, the description of the murderer is someone of around 5 foot 11, thin faced with short receding hair, wearing a blue zip up jacket. The key prosecution witness who claimed to have identified Jason as he quickly passed by has since said that he, the witness, was drunk. An identity parade was handled really badly by the Metropolitan Police. And finally, no forensic evidence has ever linked Jason to this murder. And forensic evidence that might clear his name has been lost or access refused to the Moore and Derby families. Evidence uh, was negated to be mentioned, like the fact that the, the eyewitness was actually drunk. Uh, he has actually come forward now and said that he was drunk, he was inebriated and the police actually uh, showed him a picture three days before he went on an ID parade. So you know, a miscarriage of justice, this has got all the all marks of, of corruption. If you've got any messages for Jason, what would you say to him mate? Keep strong, just keep strong, keep doing what you're doing and fingers crossed it won't be much longer.